Christ at all points tempted like as we are. I've heard preachers say Christ had another nature. He couldn't have been tempted like you're tempted. If he wasn't tempted like you're tempted, how can he be your mediator? And how can he be your high priest? So he has to know what you're feeling. He has to know what you're going through. Uh, when, when you're weeping in your sorrow, when you're troubled, do you, you, you think he doesn't know that? Why, well, he went through that. Sure. And when you're tempted with something pushing you to the brink, uh, he knows that, uh, see, because he was in the genealogy of David, and David was a picture, only David yielded, and Christ uh, did not. Now, I want to show you something here in this that you had there. See, let's, let's put Christ here now, and not David, in this 12th verse of the 55th chapter. Let's put Christ there. And then put Judas there and fulfill the prophecy of Judas. See, he said, for if it was, for it was not an enemy, who was it that sold Jesus and for 30 pieces of silver? Not an enemy. It was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. If it had been a Pharisee or a Sadducee, sorrow would not have filled Christ's heart as it did for Judas. But he said, neither was it he that hated me, that didn't magnify himself against me. Judas did not hate Christ. That's right. Judas wanted Christ to, to rise to power as a rebellious man and start a rebellion in Israel and gather forces and make war with the Romans. And Christ wouldn't do it. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants sure, fight. Yeah. See, but, but Judas finally gave up and said, this man is not going to ever, uh, and his, his motive was wrong because he wanted to be on his right hand and rise to power with him. Yeah. And he, did, he didn't see that Christ didn't come to do that. Christ came to build a spiritual kingdom, not a natural kingdom. And he said, he, Judas didn't hate Christ. He sold him because he gave up on the idea that Christ was ever going to be the leader that he envisioned him to be. And, and uh, he said, then, uh, then I did a magnificent and then, the uh, last part of that, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, it was thou, Judas, a man, my equal, my guide, and, or that is one that walked with me and, and went and staked out camps with me and, and lived with me and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked under the house of God in company. See, that, that, that was Judas that that prophecy was Amen. dealing with there, uh, as well as David uh, in uh, this 55th uh, chapter. The scriptures are wonderful, the way they open up and, and reveal. Um, anyone else right here that has a comment or a question on this, these books, the Book of Life, the Book of Remembrance. Um, and then, let's see, in Philippians, uh, let's take one more uh, New Testament scripture. Uh, is it? Uh, four, three. Four, three. Four, three. four and three, is that? Yes. Let's look at Philippians four and three. Um, here, Paul is Peter Linder. And I think it's wonderful the way the Lord, uh, and if we understand, in Philippians 4 and 3, he said, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow. Now, when Brother Lee was preaching last night about the oxen um, and being unequally yoked, and here's one strong oxen pulling, and here's one weak, emaciated, oxen that won't pull, can't pull, because they're not properly in health as they should, and you're linked with that. If you are a yoke fellow with a wrong, wrong brother or sister under the yoke of Christ, and they can't pull, they can't help you do the work he's called you to do, and they're not doing the work God called them to do, they're not a true yoke fellow. But Paul said, here, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow. 
So it matters who you're yoked up to. If you're yoked up to an unbeliever, that you're, you're, you're not going to get uh, uh, much accomplished in your spiritual life. You have, to, you have to be yoked, or that is, have fellowship with, equal fellowship with those that have the yoke of Christ. Uh, I, I choose my company in life. I do not let myself become yoked up with people that tear me down, yeah. that take my faith and dash it in a rock, oh, yeah. if they could, uh, that are negative. I can't be yoked with them. Mm -hmm. I can't be yoked with an unbeliever. I can't be yoked with a person that's weak or going a different direction. I just won't have fellowship with them. I can't. But he said, uh, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other, other of my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. They're in the book of life. So there are names that are in the book of life. Right now, on this earth, there are categories of people in the church, the body of Christ, that are in the book of life. That is the eternal book of God, the book of life, never to be blotted out, never to be taken out of that book, but to see him face to face one day. Sister Valerie. I know, <clears throat> I know it's true that you have to be equally yoked with Christians and being unequally yoked with the body unbelievers is is not something that you're supposed to do but what if it's and and you mentioned that about well, those yeah. who tear you down and those who um don't lift you up what if those are christians who claim to be christians who mm -hmm. are known as christians what if those people that tear you down and that you no, no, no. and that make you feel bad about yourself and whatever right, right. what if those are christians right and you're supposed mm -hmm. to be brothers yeah. and sisters in Christ. Well, generally, that's where, generally, I'm going to say this. Generally speaking, I don't know of anybody right now in the city I'm having a problem with. If I've got a problem, it's usually dealing with someone that's walking in the church with me, or I'm walking with them. Uh, I, I really don't. I, I deal with business people here. I deal with lawyers, attorneys. I, I deal with uh, you know hospitals and, and, and people, but, but the church is where the tares are planted. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the tares grow right beside the wheat, yeah. the good grain, not in the world, but in the church. Right. Uh, and and I think mm -hmm. to answer that more, uh, Valerie, that's why Paul said, "True you fellows, that person that's tearing you down." that wears a label of a Christian, but yet they're tearing you. They're not edifying you. They're not building you in love and faith. And they try to tear your character, they try to tear your morale down, or your image of self that you want to be lifted up in Christ, but they make you feel you're nothing. You're not going anywhere. You're not accomplishing anything. Or that you're somebody you're not. They're not a true yoke fella. They may say they're a Christian, but they're not a true Christian, or they're not a true yoke fellow. Paul said, true yoke fellows. So what do you do about that? The Bible teaches many things. It teaches charity. Uh, charity beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. Charity endureth all things. So, okay, what do you do with a person? Now, in the natural, it would be simple to say, I'm just going to get rid of you now and forever. But you've got other laws in the scriptures that teaches you to be kind yes. and tenderhearted and forgiving one another. Yes. So you've got to do a balancing act so that you don't become a slayer of someone right. because they're cutting you or crossing you or bothering you or trying to tear you down. And that's where wisdom builds the house. Yes, mm -hmm. You've got to become greater in God than they are so that your armor will be on you. Yes, and whatever they do, that will try to tear, rend. Mm -hmm. You're showing mercy all the time, yes. as long as you can. 
You're showing mercy. You're putting the rest of the scriptures into practice. You're showing charity. Then the time will come when God, yeah. God will prevail. And that person that is working that iniquity to try to tear you down and take you apart, and they're doing that in their own spirit, God has a way of stepping in and eliminating that, and he will. See, that's where the Lord fights your battle. Now you say, should I ever fight it? Yes, there's time. If you see that person, that they really have, they really have transgressed your life. Speak, and I put the other scriptures into practice. Speak with charity. Speak with love if you can. <laughs> Speak with kindness, tenderness, and show them the error of their ways, if possible. Now, if not possible, then finally you have to separate yourself from them and just say, I can't bear this any longer. I just can't. I'm going to find me a true young fella and pray for them that God will open their eyes and let them see their nature, their spirit, their character. Uh, but you act with the scriptures at all times. You work with the scriptures. You're stronger. I've always felt this way, and I'll get Michelle's hand in. I've always felt this way in my spirit, even way back, way back. I knew that at times I have not been perfect in my dealing with my brother and my sisters. So therefore that put mercy in me to deal with them and their infraction sometimes. But then I've had this in me too, that when it come down to the showdown of them discouraging me, taking me down in God, tearing my spirit up, God has always let me be able inside to make a decision at the moment it should, and yet, and yet, show mercy and show kindness and not be cruel in my spirit. And God can do that. That's wisdom. Wisdom hath built her house. She's shewn out her seven pillars. She's mingled her wife. She's slayed her beast. God will give you wisdom how to do it. Uh, he'll let you know just that's it. I, I can't anymore. I've gone as far as I can. But at the same time, you're not seeking to slay them. You're hoping they'll be saved. You're hoping they'll do the right thing. Um, you're not agreeing with them to do the wrong thing. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't do that. You've got to stop before you do that. But at the same time, pray that God will open their eyes and help them. Uh, Sister Michelle. It's kind of like spiritual sibling rivalry. You know, it's <laughs> just like with natural brothers and sisters, there's a thing called sibling rivalry where, you know, they, someone feels they're a little bit better than their brother or sister. And I think sometimes Christians have spiritual sibling rivalry and to make themselves feel a little bit better than they want to tear down the person that they surely do. To them. They just, surely do. Just to make themselves feel like yes. they're a little bit better in God's eyes or yes. whatever. But yes. you know, we all know that that doesn't work because God knows our hearts. Yeah, and God doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't weigh my. The Lord weigheth. The Bible said, "Every man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits." He knows. He knows what's on the scale. He knows. He knows the Lord weigheth the spirit. See? And and uh, this sibling rivalry you spoke of, it's, see, we are natural, but we are spiritual. The reason the church is as it is, is because we are yet mortals, yes. but we have immortality in us. Yes. We're carnal, but we have spirituality in us. There's two in us. There's twain, the old, the new. Now, the old is not to rule the new because Christ is the new. And Christ is to rule the old. And that's where sanctifying yourself, setting yourself apart, to where you know when that old nature is trying to take hold of you. Mm -hmm. Read the seventh chapter of Romans. It will absolutely oh, flat yes. out tell oh, you yes. without any qualms about it. Yep. Uh, read those last verses, the last eight verses yeah. of, the, of, of Romans, the seventh chapter. Paul just sounded like a man that was in a battle royal, and he was. He said, I see another member of my body. That's it. Yeah. Above that, he said, Goodness. I find that a law, that when I would do good, evil is present. Yeah. 
Yes, right. And the evil that I would not do, that I do. The good that I would do, that I do not. He said, I find in a law that when I would do good. And then he said, I see another member of my body. Well, Paul, thank you. You, you really opened my eyes, Paul. I, I know what's been going on these uh, 68 years. I've been trying to be a Christian. I see that member popping his head up. And sometimes he pops it up in me. Sometimes he pops it up in her or him. But I see that member, another member, the carnal member, warring against the law of my mind, seeking to bring me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my member. 